Let's use PicoScope to diagnose CAN problems. This will be part one of our video series in CAN diagnosis. Now reminder, when you hook up Pico, it's going to try to auto range voltage. In this case, it's looking at 20 millivolts. That's not even a tenth of a volt. So never mind the pattern that you see right now. Now we're going to go ahead and use both channel A and channel B for this exercise. Channel A will be CAN high. Channel B in the red will be CAN low. Okay, let's hook it up to our vehicle. I've got Pico using our printer cable going from the computer to the PicoScope box. I have connected on the end channel A and channel B. Okay, so for this purpose we're going to use a breakout box for DLC3 just to make sure that we don't have to do any back probing. Okay, so let's go ahead and hook up PicoScope channel A to terminal 6 of our breakout box, that's CAN high. Channel B will be hooked up to terminal 14, that's CAN low. And then I'm going to use channel 4 there for ground. So using channel A on the PicoScope box and B, A is going to terminal 6 of the DLC3 and then I'll ground it. Now, when hooking up CAN low, terminal 14, I'm going to ground it as well on, on channel 4, but it's not necessary. Okay, this is what I've got going on. Notice that CAN high is bouncing all over the place. Uh, why is it doing that? Well, if you look to the left-hand side where the voltage is reading, notice that it's switching from 5 volt to 10 volt range. Okay, in fact, you can see it right here. There it's 5, there it just switched to 10, and back to 5. So I'm going to lock it into the manual range of 5, so it's not bouncing around on me. And do the same with CAN low on channel B. Okay, the only thing left to go ahead and, and lock in is our time. Now, it's a very fast signal, so we're going to use 50 microsecond divisions to catch our CAN signal. There it is. It's bouncing all over the place, so let's put a trigger in there. Now, triggers. I'm going to use an auto trigger in this case. Now notice the little yellow diamond that popped up on the screen? What it's saying is that on channel A, on the rising edge, it's catching it at zero volts. Well, channel A isn't going through zero volts, so I need to put it up where it's going to read. There, I put it in the path of where channel A is going in. So on the rising edge, it is now going, uh, 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 catching that, that signal right there. Okay, so here we go. This is a good CAN signal. Let's go ahead and measure our voltages. This is going to be important for diagnosis. Okay, so idle voltage. In other words, no communication is happening. It happens to be 2.5 volts. And so we go from 2.5 to 3.5 on CAN high. So in other words, just 1 volt. There you go, three and a half. So our total signal amplitude is one volt. Let's measure CAN low. Again, idle voltage is two and a half volts. And then if we measure the, the amplitude of CAN low, it's one and a half volts. So in other words, it's 1 volt as well. For the total rise of 2 volts from the bottom of CAN low to the top of CAN high. This voltage isn't operating anything. It is informational, meaning the ECUs are communicating with each other. Now, CAN communication issues happen when the rules of this voltage protocol are not maintained. Now remember, Voltage on CAN high is 2.5 to 3.5, or in other words, 1 volt. CAN low is 2.5 to 1.5, in other words, 1 volt. For a total of 2 volts differential from CAN low to CAN high. This is important when it comes to diagnosis. 
So what can mess up the voltages to where this information becomes corrupt? The answer is standard electrical problems. Shorts, opens, or opens little brother high resistance. Let's first take a look at open on can high. Here's a normal signal. And then once we create the open, take a look at what happened to our voltage. It was nice before where we had our 2.5 to 3.5 and 2.5 to 1.5. And now if you look at the amplitude of can high that has the open, it actually drops below our 2.5 and, and rises much higher than our 3.5. So if we were to measure just above 2.5, it uh, is well over that 1 volt. We're at 1.3 volts. Then if we look at our can low, take it to the beginning of the amplitude, to the end of the amplitude, it is less than 1 volt, 700 millivolts to be exact. Why is this, that our signal is messed up like that? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got going on here on this Tacoma CAN communication network. So we are on the DLC3, Terminal 6 and Terminal 14. Here's Channel A giving us our CAN high. Here's Channel B giving us our CAN low. Now, let's talk in, in terms of basic electrical here for a second. If I were to go ahead and replace my picoscope with an ohm meter, and I went to go ahead and check resistance between Terminal 6 and 14, this is nothing more than a parallel circuit. So as current came from Terminal 6, it would branch off to the combo meter and, and then also go to the, e, the ECM. It would go through these two 120 ohm resistors, known as terminating resistors, and then would come back on the, this, this uh, uh, can low line back to Terminal 14. This is nothing more than a simple parallel circuit. So if I were to go ahead and check resistance, this would be an equivalent resistance because I have two branches for current to flow. So I would read 60 ohms of resistance. Um, these terminating resistors, their purpose is to smooth out the signal. Uh, that's what, what gives us the nice square waves as we look at it with picoscope. So, why did it look so rough when we created the open? Well, it's because we took out one of the branches. Let's take a look at it. Here is an open on can high. Now if we follow current flow, current can't, can't go through that way through this, this uh, 120 ohm uh, resistor. So therefore, what would we see on channel A? We would see a higher than one volt amplitude because it's not going through the terminating resistor. Then likewise, if I uh, have my signal on can low, it has to go through a full 120 ohm resistor in order to, to uh, uh, get our signal there at terminal 14. So therefore, that is why our amplitude is lower than 1 volt, because it is seeing a full 120 ohm resistor, rather than the equivalent resistance of 60. So, based on the amplitude of that signal, I know that I have an open on can high. So going back to our signal, based on the fact that I have a higher amplitude on can high and a lower amplitude on can low, tells me that my open is on can high. Let's see what an open on can low looks like now. Here's my normal signal. And there we go. We've got our open on can low now. I'm going to put in a trigger here on, on channel B so that we can catch that. Okay, I just got to put it in where uh, it intersects. And there we go. Stop it here. Oh, that's not a good one. Here we go. Now, take a look at uh, the, the signal of our, our uh, can low being open. Let's measure our can high first. Okay, taking it where the signal starts to where it ends. 
again, we are below 1 volt. Okay, and then measuring our can low, considerably higher than 1 volt. As I go ahead and change my, my readings there, from top to bottom of it, you can see that it's much higher than 1 volt. Why is that? Let's figure it out. Okay, so when it comes to an open on CAN low, again, the example of our, our CAN network. So if I create an open on CAN low, this is going to be the exact opposite of what we had before. Now, CAN high is going to be going through a full 120 ohm resistor. Meanwhile, CAN low will not be going through a resistance back on terminal 14 of the DLC3. Therefore, my amplitude of CAN low is higher than 1 volt, and my amplitude of CAN high is lower than 1 volt. So just by looking at our pattern, I can tell that my open is on CAN low. Let's take a look at a short on CAN high now. Here's our normal signal, and create the short. Okay, again, uh, take a look at our voltages. Okay, notice our idle voltage went from 2.5, now is sitting at 0, which should make sense since we're shorted to ground. Here's some attempts at communication, but they're simply not getting any pulse width or amplitude, so this would definitely be a no communication situation. So when it comes to a short on CAN high, again, here is our CAN network on the Tacoma and channel A and channel B connected to CAN high and CAN low through terminal 6 for high, 14 for low. So what happens when we create that short? So here's, here's a short on CAN high. When we short that, all sort of current flow is going to go straight to ground right there rather than push through any resistors on, uh, uh, in the combo meter or in the ECM. Therefore, we see our idle voltage of 2.5 volts drop to zero, and we see attempts at communication, but it simply cannot create our voltage differential be between CAN high and CAN low. So therefore, we have no communication on the network. Now let's take a look at a short on CAN low. Normal signal, and then uh, go ahead and create our short. There you go. Now, if you take a look at this, you can see that our idle voltage again is zero. But take a look at those spikes on CAN high. What's that all about? Notice that our amplitude for CAN high actually kind of gets into that realm of 2.5 to 3.5. This is still not communication because the amplitude's not correct and neither is the pulse width. But there is one thing about this. It can fool a CAN bus check done by TechStream. And we'll take a look at that here in a few minutes. But uh, let's, let's take a look at this short on, uh, on, the, on our diagram. So again, here is our, our diagram. Uh, channel A for CAN high, channel B for CAN low. 6 for CAN high, 14 for CAN low. And let's see what happens when there's a short on CAN low. Okay, we can see our short right here. So what's going to happen in this situation? Again, our signal or our communication that's happening from these different ECUs, rather than pushing through our terminating resistors, is just going to go straight to ground. Therefore, my idle voltage of 2.5 gets change to 1 volt uh, as it goes straight to ground. And then we have attempts at communication, but they're not successful. However, we can identify that it is a short on CAN low because our primary communication line is CAN high. So therefore, we can see some attempts at communication on, on CAN high, but they're not following the protocol voltage at all. They're much higher than 1 volt. Uh, so therefore, this, this uh, communication is completely not, not usable. So therefore, we have no communication.
So as I mentioned, a short on can low can actually fool the can bus check done by texturing. So we have the short in our vehicle right now. Let's see how, how this reacts when we do a CAN bus check. Trying to communicate with the vehicle right now. And just as I suspected, we have no communication due to the short. So we are going to go ahead and manually select a Tacoma 2016. And then fill out the rest of this information, the engine, and then smart key as well. And let's do our CAN bus check. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, there's our CAN bus check. Now, pay attention to what each uh, input is. Now, if we had a different situation where we had no problem with the CAN uh, e uh, line itself, then we would display all of the ECUs there. Now notice it says that we have none communicating, which you'd expect from a short. But wait for it here. Okay, it now says that we have a refresh rate of around three seconds. Notice we've already had a gateway ECU show up as communicating. Uh, then it says it's not communicating. No, no, now wait, we got an airbag ECU. Uh, now they're both saying that they're not communicating, but they were saying they were communicating just a second ago when they were yellow. Uh, so if I were just to let this ride, I would continue to see these ECUs and possibly more show that they were communicating and then bounce into not communicating. What does this mean? Well, this is a characteristic that can be seen due to a short on can low. Remember, we had voltage that entered that 2.5 to 3.5. Well, as the tech stream sits there and tries to sequentially communicate with each ECU and asking if it's there and it's communicating, it's getting false information. It thinks that there's communication, when in actuality it's not communication at all. A uh, sure way to be able to tell if, uh, if these were communicating or not would be to actually try to get into each one of these ECUs uh, at the uh, uh, system select screen and give it a try. Okay, last one before we take a look at further diagnosis in video two. Here's our normal signal and we're going to create a short between can high and can low. Here you go. Now if you look at this, the idle voltage is still two and a half but we have no separation between can high can low when it comes to our one volt amount. Uh, so uh, we can't get any voltage differential, we can't get any pulse width, this simply would not be communication. However, but looking at the fact that it's still at two and a half, I would know that the two are shorted together. Check out the process for Diag in our CAN Diagnostics video number two.